Hello, good evening, and welcome to Prague Chattery 777. We are, of course, talking about the Mars Volta, and we've made it to their fourth album, The Bedlam in Goliath. This was released in 2008, and um, this is certainly a contender for uh, my personal favorite Mars Volta album. Um, obviously, I've, me I've mentioned before, uh, Francis the Mute, I think, is their magnum opus. I think that, you know, that will, that will forever stand as, um, you know, their high point in my books. Uh, but this one has always come very, very close. Um, so obviously the Mars Volta itself is uh, comprised of uh, Omar Rodriguez Lopez on guitar and musical arrangements and Cedric Bixler Zavala on vocals, lyrics, and um, um, vocal arrangements. He's the, he's the melody guy. And it's so melodic. They are such a melodic band in spite of all the, you know, the craziness that, that, that goes on within their uh, music and their arrangements. Uh, so yeah, the, the Mars Volta itself is the partnership between Omar and Cedric, and then the songs are then performed by the um, Mars Volta group, which essentially is a, you know, a group of shifting and changing musicians that had a few long-staying members, uh, notably um, Ike Isaiah Owens, and um, Juan Alderette, who was the uh, bass player, um, Marcel Rodriguez Lopez was the percussionist, that's Omar's brother. Um, and on this album, notably, we have Thomas Pridgen on the drums. This is his first album uh, with the Mars Volta. And um, his drumming is absolutely crazy. I remember when, when this first came out, or I got this right when it came out, and I was blown away by it as, as you know, the young, impressionable young man that I was. And uh, he is an astounding drummer. I mean, Thomas Pridgen is, is absolutely over the top, which is you would think is perfect for the Mars Volta, but I think if it's possible... Uh, he's the one guy that overplays. Um, I mean, he sounds great on record uh, because, you know, of course, you know, recording, they are able to, you know, all the parts are were recorded separately and then spliced together afterwards. So, you know, you, you get that perfect uh, recording quality, but um, live, I think sometimes he would overplay and he, he kind of you kind of lose track of where the song is sometimes, unfortunately. There's a few clips live that I've seen where he does kind of go a little over the top. That said, I guess it, Thomas Bridgen is a fantastic drummer, and his contribution on this album is uh, certainly, you know, he kind of makes it what it is. Um, but yeah, I would say, uh, on the whole, this is probably their heaviest album musically, and their, their craziest and most bombastic and fastest and most frantic album, which is saying something, because like I said, they... You know, they built quite a reputation for being all of those things over the years, but this is this is kind of up to a new extreme. Uh, it is a concept album, so I guess it's their third concept album. Deloused, of course, was a concept album about uh, um, the tales of the journeys, subconscious journeys of Serpent Tax. Francis the Mute's a concept album about uh, diary that was found in a car. And... Um, this is a concept album about a Ouija board that uh, was purchased in Jerusalem, I believe, and um, it's it's about these the, the crazy happenings that uh, that came about as they played with this Ouija board and they unleashed the madness of these demons or whatever. Um, like I said, with with uh, typically with Mars Volta, the lyrics are so um, convoluted and strange. There's a, it's the the visual aspect. It's it's what it's what. Uh, it's what you picture in your mind when you hear those words. It's not necessarily what they mean. So, you know, the concept, the whole concept album thing with the Mars Volta, I've kind of, I've kind of um, had a loose um, opinion on, really. However, that being said, I think this is probably their most successful concept album in that, as a whole, you really kind of, um, you know, there is a strange mysticism, even though it's super heavy and it's super bombastic and it's, you know, the Mars Volta playing at their absolute craziest. There's a strange kind of mystic quality to the album that uh, really lends lends itself to that whole Ouija board theme. Um, which there, there's a you know a, a scary spiritual edge to some of the tracks. Um, so in that regard, I think it's probably one of their most uh, one of their more successful uh, concept albums. That's the thing too that that's that's notable. I. I I tend to compare it, I guess, unfairly to um, Francis the Mute. This is the first time they went. They said about doing a whole singular piece, because of course, Amputecture is was considered separate songs or vignettes or whatever. Um, but this is definitely very different to Francis the Mute. Francis the Mute's got that epic quality where everything is big and just grand, whereas this has kind of got a more, like I said, more mystic, mysterious, um, you know. 
I don't know, it's certainly not ambient, but there, there's, there's a mystic, spiritual kind of quality to the album that replaces that epicness that's on uh, Francis the Mute, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, let me, let me try and get on through the tracks here. Uh, it opens with uh, Aberincula, and this has to be the most jarring opener to, uh, to any album ever. I mean, I, I, I always, you know, whenever I play this album, it's, it, there's always that kind of, you know, brace yourself before anger. As soon as you press play, it's just, BOOM! Immediately. Have you seen the, uh, have you seen, um, the living tortured in their wells? All the non, all the non-believers, blah, 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 blah. I, I, there's lyrics, you know, I, I recognize them when, when I'm listening to the song, but, uh, I can't, I can't repeat them offhand. Uh, but it's a really, really crazy song. It's just based on this fast descending line. We're immediately introduced to the, you know, craziness of Thomas Pridgen's drumming, which is, you know, completely over the top, but suits suits the song. Um, and we get a few variations on that descending theme, and, um, you know, like, you really don't have a break from that first. Like I said, the moment you press the play, press play, it's just, it, it's frantic the whole way through. Till about halfway, we get into a little instrumental section, which is cool. We kind of, we're kind of introduced to um, a little Middle Eastern kind of a theme that Omar plays, ding, 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 uh, which is really, really cool. Uh, and it's still a very high energy, but this is actually the first little lull in the album, or not lull, the first um, kind of break for your ears, the first dynamic bit, I guess. Um, and it's passed off between this. Um, sort of Middle Eastern theme that Omar is playing, and uh, some frantic sax playing. There's a lot of saxophone on this album, I forgot to mention, which is really, really cool. Um, so it switches between Omar and this sax playing with these big, lush chords in the background. Really, really cool stuff. Really, really proggy stuff. Finally comes to uh, a crashing halt, and before you have a chance to breathe, track two, Metatron, instantly starts, and it, it you know, it, the energy just, it, it goes up. Uh, from from where it's already been, really, the first 15 minutes of this album are basically completely balls out in your face, <laughs> which is great, and it challenges the listener. You know, like I said, it's frightening. It, you know, you know that, that when you press that play button, you're in for 15 minutes of just jarring madness. Um, but Metatron is a great track. I really like that. I guess you know you call it the chorus. That maybe I'll break down. Doom, 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 doom. Lots of weird time signatures, lots of, um, you know, weird, tricky little musical bits. So, it, it, you know, it's in your face and it's crazy, but it's, it's very interesting to listen to. Um, it's got a really nice uh, extended uh, middle section. This is one of the longer songs on the album at uh, eight minutes. The songs are generally starting to get shorter at this point for the band. But, yeah, at eight minutes, it has got this big, long middle section. Um, yeah, I like the, the whole folding wormholes, my time is writing in the alphabet, uh, that whole... That whole section is really, really strong. Um, winds its way back to that main theme. Ba -da 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 -da. And again, we're, we're, we're probably about 12 minutes in at this point, and you, the listener still hasn't had a break. It's still it's just so in your face. Oh, it's good. I just love that stuff. <laughs> it comes to a crazy, uh, merciful, and jolting uh, end, and then we do get a proper break with a little bit of ambient noises and whatnot. Um, and then the uh, distorted vocals of Cedric start coming in for the uh, track three, which is um, Aliena. Uh, lots of distorted vocals on this album. That's uh, that's certainly an interesting trait. There's that's that, there's a lot of that on Aberincula and on Metatron as well. Um, but uh, very very cool stuff. Uh, really strong melody in uh, Iliana. I guess I guess you could probably say this is the closest thing to uh, the pop song. It's got the really weird ambient intro with the distorted vocals, and the outro is very weird and distorted. Um, but the song itself, very very strong melody, and a lot really like that. If you can see where I've been section, um, and just a killer killer riff under the under the um, you know going under under that melody, that um, sort of heavy Latin thing. You know, I'm I'm, I'm thinking of you know. Amplified Santana. I love that. Really, really great stuff. There's a great little false ending as well, and then we kind of get that um, cool uh, digital percussion bit that kind of goes through and then goes back into the distorted vocals for the kind of weird ambient outro. Uh, so yeah, really, really good song. Really like uh, Iliana. Uh, we move on to track four, Wax Simulacra. This, of course, uh, was the first single of the album, and um, 
What a great song this is. Um, this is another one of those those tracks where, you know, what, what does the Mars Volta sound like? Well, it's a great, punchy, two-minute song that, um, you know, certainly uh, conveys, you know, conveys a good idea of what uh, of what they're all about. Uh, at least, you know, this at this period, anyway. I um, guess it's got that, that, there's that hardcore punk influence, of course. Um, well, that, that's, that's, that's been present for a lot of it, well, Aberincula and Metatron as well. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just a really really great song. Again, great uh, great drumming from Thomas Pridge and some of those some, some of those fills that are going to those weird time signatures are, are just ludicrous. Um, but yeah, yeah, great great track. You just you just gotta listen to that one, Wax Simulacra. Uh, and this is this kind of forms a pairing, I think. Tracks four and five, um, Simulacra works its way into uh, track five, which is Goliath, uh, and. Again, what a great song. This is another one of those definitive Mars Volta moments for me. I think a lot of people compare Goliath to 21st Century Schizoid Man. I've seen that online more than once. And um, I don't really see it personally. I can, I can, I guess I can, you know, that it's got that ding, ding, ding. It's got that part going for it. Um, but it is definitely, it, it's, I, I get a Zeppelin feeling for parts of, uh, of you know, the first section. The, like, I guess the song kind of section. Um, you know, does it make you feel alright? That's very Zeppelin as far as, you know, as far as my ears, you know, can hear it. Um, but the real, the real great part about Goliath is once we get to the, uh, the breakdown in the middle section, it starts, kind of goes into that little jazzy boom, 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 Starts out real jazzy and kind of light, frantic percussion, lots of, lots of good stuff coming out of Marcel, um, at that point, but... You know, it starts out as this jazzy motif, but then, you know, one, once the guitar kicks in and uh, Omar starts, you know, backing up the rhythm and the, and the drums go into absolute maximum Thomas Pridgen frenzy mode. Uh, that is utterly fantastic. That is, that is um, you know, a, a Mars Volta moment of awesomeness. Um, and Cedric is just, you know, right out of this world, you know. It, it, I haven't talked enough about how phenomenal a vocalist he is. He is, you know, and again, he may not be to everyone's taste. I mean, he's, he's got that, you know, I guess he's got that Kate Bush thing where it's so high-pitched and it's so frenzied and, you know, over-the-top and dramatic that it might, you know, it may frighten people at first, but, you know, the guy's got some serious vocal chops and he's a ridiculous performer as well. Um, and his phenomenal lyricist, you know, some of, some of those lines that, that, that come out in the middle of Goliath there, um, um, I'm all out of pulse, but I know you can resuscitate me. You know what the hell is he talking about? But it's the way he's saying it. And again, it's very visual. It's all it's all about the the visuals with with the Mars Volta. But yeah, great great track. Goliath is is um, you know certainly a contender for for one of the you know best single tracks of the album. Um, and just as it reaches that you know maximum velocity and then some, um, we make our way to track six. Which is tourniquet man? Although I think he sings it tourniquet man. I've always known the word as tourniquet, but um, this is uh, probably, I guess, the ballad of the album. Again, very short, uh, just a two-minute piece. Um, it's quite lovely, actually. It's uh, you know simple, direct. Well, lyrically maybe not quite so much, but uh, um, melodically it's very direct. And this is a nice, a nice simple little interlude. It's one of the one of the few moments on the album where you know our ears get a quick break. I think there's some Mellotron going on in the background as well. Um, but just as you start to get you know lulled into this lovely melody, it starts to go all weird and distorted again. We, and it, it kind of breaks into this. It breaks down into this um, you know demented chaos, which is really really cool. And it kind of marks about the halfway point of the album. Uh, and after Tourniquet Man thoroughly falls apart, we uh, wind our way into Cavalettis. Uh, and this is a, another contender for one of my favorite songs on the album. Certainly one of the more experimental songs. I mean, I think this the second half of the album has there's there's more experimentation as far as arrangements and um, uh, you know just doing things very unconventionally. There's a lot of that in the second half. And Cavalet, but Cavalettis is really really great. I love the um, you know it's it's almost you know hardcore punk meets you know surf rock uh, that crazy intro, that crazy uh, intro theme, and super high energy, you know, it's, it's definitely got that punk edge to it, um, 
And I, I love the just the demented chorus that kind of comes in the do 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 like it's it's the most awkward time signature. It's 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 the most it's the time signature you should never use, but they use it, and you know it works somehow. It all works. Uh, I also really like the the kind of middle section that um, that interlude riff. Da 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 uh, that's a really, really, really cool section. Um, great, again, great vocals by Cedric that are that are flying over top there. Um, and I like how uh, it kind of goes into the weird ambient noises, and the the backing track kind of fades away, and you think it's going to go into some other territory, and then <laughs> keeps coming back. And it comes back in like waves, and it gradually gets more and more intense, and you know, it's 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 a really, really cool track. Uh, again, winds its way back into the the kind of you know hardcore surf rock bit, and uh, it's 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 a classic track, one of my favorites. Um, yeah, and then uh, we work our way uh, to track eight, which is uh, Agadez. Uh, this is another one of those moments where you know you, you can you can almost hear some of that uh, that pop influence there. There's a really really strong hook in Agadez. I love that um, you know. I, I can't I can't think or think of or do the melody right now, but that because boom, doom, 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 doom. it only comes a few times, but it's it, it works as a really really good hook, and you know it shows that you know they they they're they're so versatile in their sensibilities. Um, so yeah, I, I guess it's a really really good song. I mean, the first half of it's kind of got that pop thing, and then it goes into the um, you know the the fusiony Latiny kind of stuff, which is really really great. Uh. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic track. Not the best on the album, but I certainly, I certainly quite enjoy it. Excuse me, I'm just finishing my candy here. Excuse me. Uh, we move on to track nine. Um, Ask uh, Ascapius, I believe it's pronounced Ascapius. And this is the track that, um, you know, if there is one that is kind of forgettable, this is the one that I'm always, I always forget about until I listen back to the album. I go, oh yeah, yeah, there's that thing. Um, it's still really good. Uh, the first half of it feels very much like you know an interlude on the album. It's not. It doesn't. It, it feels kind of separate from the second half. Um, the first half is really really cool though. I mean, it is. It is part of the song. There's lots of lyrics and there's you know lots of melodies you know going on. But like I said, it's got the. It's got that weird kind of you know musical interlude kind of a feel to it. Almost reminds you of like Disney music. You know. The completely demented, you know. Think of like Fantasia, the music in Fantasia, in Fantasia, but all messed around and you know Halloween orange and chimney red, <laughs> to quote Tom Waits randomly. Um, so that, it's a, it's a cool first half, and then the the second half, the song beat is quite strong. I like the um, uh, "Help Me Come Alive" uh, section. It really starts to conjure up images of you know the whole Ouija board concept. Um, you know, that's been present through all of it, you know, lyrically. But I particularly help me come alive. I get I get Ouija board vibes with uh, with that with that track. Moving on to track ten. This is kind of the finale. This is where the you know, the whole thing starts to wrap itself up. Uh, we get Ouroboros, which is another one of my favorites on the album. Um, it's it's got a very strong emotive part. You know, with the, with those big synth washes that come out. Um, uh, you know that that whole with all components in the fault section is really 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 good, um, and that's traded off. But you know the the, the kind of you know nostalgic part, the uh, components in the fault part is traded off with um, the kind of punkier, crazier, crazier bit. Um, and it kind of has a return, you know, it, a little variation of the da 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 kind of a variation um, from the Cavaletta's song. Um, that comes in at, at one point, which is really, really good. Um, that whole "Don't you ever, ever trust my mercy." Really, really good arrangement, actually, because it introduces all kinds of, you know, uh, distant parts, and they all kind of intermingle, and they, and they, uh, you know, they join each other towards the end. Really, really strong. When you get that ba dum bum ba dum bum ba dum bum ba dum bum ba dum, you got that riff going on, and he and then he does the uh, components in the fault line over top. Completely distorted, of course. You know the 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 vocal distortions in full force there, but really, really good stuff. Ouroboros is great. Uh, we move on to track uh, track eleven, and I'm just gonna sound like a broken record. This is another really, really good song. This is Soothsayer. Uh, this is named after what they named the Ouija board, I guess. They called it the Soothsayer. 
Um, and this is this is kind of an interesting uh, change of pace. This is something that the, they never really did before. Uh, it's almost like a mantra. Uh, it's one of the longest songs on the album. It's nine minutes long, but um, it just sticks on one theme, and it's very hypnotic and really you know really get that kind of Middle Eastern flavor, that mystic kind of a flavor. Um, boom, doom, 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 da, na, na, na. A terrible singer. <laughs> but it's a uh, it really, really good theme, and it, like I said, it's kind of like a mantra. It has all the vaulted traits, you know, the, the crazy drumming is there, but it's still more atmospheric and still more sort of hypnotic. I mean, it's funny, it doesn't feel like nine minutes. There's a lot of effects that, that you know, introduce it, and then uh, towards the end, uh, you hear all this chanting, and I guess, you know, according to Wikipedia, I guess Omar uh, did some field recording in the... Um, Jewish, Muslim, and Christian uh, quarters in Jerusalem. So that's a cool thing that he did to uh, conclude Soothsayer. Uh, but yeah, that's a really, really good track. And in a lot of ways, that's kind of feels like it ought to be the end. But then we also get uh, Conjugal Burns, which uh, it, it's kind of like a coda um, to the whole thing. Feels It feels like, you know, coda or um, uh, postlude or something like that. And it's, it's a really good song, kind of a, a, a typical... Uh, typical Vol Vol Volta song. I have a stutter. Pretty typical Mars Volta song. Um, kind of, it feels kind of weird to end the album after Soothsayer. I always thought that Soothsayer would, was was like a, a perfect end, but uh, uh, it's Conjugal Burns wraps everything up with the big high energy. You know, it, it you know Soothsayer is a lot more mellow than some of the other stuff on the album, but uh, um, towards the end, it's got a great a great. Um, you know, hooky kind of a chorus that all of this time. Um, so yeah, it's uh, not one of the best songs on the album, but it wraps up something very, very unique and very, very special. Um, this is the second of the three albums that feature this particular uh, cover art. I, I, his name escapes me at the moment, but very, very cool cover art. The um, pumpkin orange selling man there. Very, very cool stuff. So yeah, there you have it. I'm, I've probably gone beyond my, uh, beyond my line but beyond the lines of reason here with my time so uh thank you very much for watching i've been talking about the bedlam and goliath by the mars volta one of my favorite albums uh in their collection uh so you should buy it because it's really really good and um yeah don't forget to like and subscribe and all the rest of it stay tuned for more i'll be talking about octahedron big changes were underway or you know musically big changes were underway but i'll talk more about that in the next video until then thank you very much we'll talk to you later